Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Control AWE. Before we move on from From Morrow, there's a neat side quest for us to do here in the Lunar Module Room. Uh, it's called Gerbil Took the Top Head. Yes, hello? Yes, me? Worry who? See the sea. Hello? Hello! Great about us today. Long roads and no hardly. You are Bygon? Uh, sure. Why are you locked up in here? Ah, uh, casual turning. Back in front. And Gerbil took the top head. Not being pressed for that. Lady going and loosing back for I? Sorry, I... I think I'm misunderstanding you. What do you want? The head. The head for tales. For reading news, jars, words, and tumble. The reading head. Okay, okay. Take it easy. I'll... Uh... I'll take a look. So, maybe it wants something to read. Or a jar. Let's just see what we can find. So they could be speaking in metaphor, uh, but another distinct possibility is that they're speaking uh, in what is called word salad, or the technical term for that is schizophagia. And phasia just means speech. This could be what it wants. They're speaking. Give it a shot. They're speaking fluently. It's just the words they're using make their speech almost unintelligible to parse. No, no, jars. A head. Scotch and peppers. Head. Okay, that wasn't right. So phasia is a suffix you see a lot in psychology for a number of disorders or symptoms like an aphasia, which are themselves speech disorders, usually resulting from trauma. trying uh brain trauma or disease they can also themselves be uh symptoms of another disorder and if you're taking intermediate level psych courses you are gonna want to know the two key parts of the brain responsible for the development and expression of language maybe this will do the trick broca's area in the frontal lobe and vernix area in the temporal lobe Yes, that wasn't it either. Huh. Uh, Broca's area is more to do with the actual use and expression of speech, whereas Vernix is about learning and comprehending language. But the division between them is less clear-cut than that. This is just the simplified version. Lady, you are school and dirt for loosing. Keep that up and I won't help you anymore. Uh, they each also have their own uh, corresponding types of aphasias associated with them. Like, uh, Varenix aphasia creates a deficit in your comprehension of language, and people with it will often speak in word salad or nonsense words, but they can speak. Clocks, lady. The head. 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 No snacks. Head is top of all up and down. At the top. The top head. Wait, does this thing actually mean head? Head is in a body's head? Where the hell am I gonna find that? We're gonna find that near the sealed fire break. And this will update after you bring uh, them enough stuff that they clearly don't want. I mentioned Varenix aphasia, right? Yeah, okay. Broca's aphasia um, is also called expressive aphasia, which affects your ability to speak at all. And since the, uh, since the subject there was speaking fluently but in word salad, that would be more of a vernix aphasia situation, or schizophasia. Uh, meaning confused speech, and the prefix kind of gives it away. Uh, it's usually a common feature of schizophrenia. So what will often happen is the schizophrenic person or the schizophasic person will sometimes have a clear concept in mind and the ability to communicate verbally but the concept that they're trying to communicate uh, sometimes won't come out as the correct word or phrase. And that doesn't necessarily mean that 100% of their words will get mixed up like this 100% of the time. Uh, the severity of it can vary dramatically. Oh god, I lost... Where did that enemy go? I came up here to chase him down. Oh no, this has gone very wrong. I came up here to chase them down. Lost track of them, thinking that they went... Oh, no! 
That's so bad. I thought they went downstairs and then couldn't find him and got shot in the back. Uh, so in any case, our job here is to parse uh, their word salad in order to satisfy their desires. And their desire is for the top head that the gerbil took. Who is the gerbil? We'll actually find that out. What is the head? Well, once we clear this, uh, this elite enemy that spawns, we will get an answer to that as well. Okay, this time, way more prepared for how this fight's gonna go. Or how it should go. And we're gonna load up, just in case. Hit him with the two-piece. And the biscuit. <laughs> He's hiding in the corner. That must have been where he was last time, too. Uh, I would like to knock him down, get a few shots in, back up a little. It didn't mac uh, maximize damage, but that's okay. Now that I'm not trying to remember things I learned... Jesus. Six, seven years ago? <laughs> in, like, neuropsych courses? I think we're good. For a head. Is that what the prisoner meant? I guess there's only one way to find out. Pretty fitting, since uh, everything that we were doing just now involves... Uh, a recreation of the Apollo, uh, the Apollo 14 mission was the one that brought the entity back, right? Yeah, so the, uh, the Apollo 14 lunar module. Pretty fitting that we get a space helmet. I just want to check real quick to see if I can find any of those vending machines I was talking about, because I still haven't actually shown that, and there aren't that many of them. Unfortunately, no. What will usually happen is you'll shoot them and you'll see the red flash of Hiss spawning in, and that's your cue uh, that you're going to get a lot of rewards if you deal with the Hiss. But now we can bring the top head back to the prisoner. And like I said, it could also be that he's just speaking in metaphor, or that he's straight up messing with everybody. But I think it's a good instructive moment. River chicken station. <laughs> oh, far tastier. Press any button. So the helmet is what you're after, huh? Tubes, snug and grape, pure grapes. Hail a lady. You're welcome, I guess. Did Kirkland lock you up in here? Chief Trouble? Yes. Teddy's lying around. But all out synapiest. Can gather for goldfishes. No wrinkle. Okay. Well, sounds like you're doing fine in there now. Just make sure you don't go anywhere. Jelly. At least we helped this guy. Oh, cool. Another shade of facet. Best we leave it locked up, though. We have no idea what it is, and we don't need any more problems out here. And Thin Space is a pretty good weapon mod, from what I remember. I think it's charge exclusive. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Projectile speed plus 1000%, but only for charge. You know, I might actually put that on and just mess around with it. Yeah, we can we can reduce the blast radius to get the projectile out that much faster. Let's see how that goes. It's like instantaneous. It fires like a hit scan weapon now. Which means those really evasive aerial hiss have way less of a chance to dodge it now. I don't know why I tried to run all the way back. When it was so much faster to just teleport to any area uh, near that junction point between Bramaro, Eagle Limited, and Bright Falls. But now we can actually go back to that, that intersection and head into the Bright Falls AWE to cap this all off. Great time to 
timing. Hartman just came through here. God, he was hideous. He tore the security door into the Breakfall's AWE site wide open. He was so ugly. Like, wow, I got a good look at him. And Christ, he does not look like he used to. The hiss must have messed him up or something. He, he, he looks like a, a bar rag that's been twisted by the world's strongest man. Or a monster from some 80s horror movie. You know, back when it was all practical effects? Ugh, did, nasty. Real did you say something? Instant. Remember, I can't hear you. Never mind, just go after Hartman. Ugh, so disgusting. I would have loved more speech from Langston. Rewritten. The darkness wants to hide the past. I've written and rewritten, deconstructed, reconstructed, experimented with different voices, changed the style, changed myself, forgotten the language, relearned the language. Have I been here before? Gone down this path before? The darkness wants to hide the past to make me lose my way. You must know where you've been to know where you're going. I trust what I read on these pages. I wrote them for a reason. My notes to myself. The only way to make progress, recap, then write more. The style then, lose the fat, make it clear, ugly, functional, present, be blunt. Only the brutal truth, cut through the reality, tear it apart, rewrite it. Be clever, make them do the work, form the image in their minds, they make it, you just imply, incept. They're drawn to the mystery, obsessed. You set it up, they put it together, their interpretation, and there's only one because you give them no choice. And they believe in it, because it's theirs now. One of the only real technical issues that consistently drives me nuts in Control is the really common Unreal Engine problem of uh, textures not loading in very quickly. Or outright glacially in some cases. And it messes with an otherwise really great aesthetic. I got jump scared by that enemy so hard the first time I played this. Uh, this is fine, right? Yeah, there's so much health. We're fine. <laughs> I'm taking this with me just in case. I don't think there's anything left to use that light on, but maybe there's something I'm misremembering. Consider myself a keen observer. Of we did have one question, though. You mentioned in an earlier conversation that your patients displayed, and I'm paraphrasing here, unnatural abilities that you, in fact, encouraged during their time in your lodge. It'd be very helpful if you could fill us in on the details there. Of course. Like yourselves, I work to understand and even bend the rules of our earthly paradigm. My patient's well-being was paramount, of course, but I would hardly be a man of science if I did not reach out at the underlying truth. As I stated in my written proposal, I believe working alongside your organization could be greatly beneficial to both parties. Sharing notes, as they say. Thank you, Doctor. That's all we need to hear. Remy, 
Dr. Emil Hartman, you have been found in breach of codes 4, 8, and 74 of the Federal Bureau of Control Criminal Offenses. What? You can't do this. I am a well-connected man. You're making a dire mistake, my friend. You will be detained until further notice and all personal property will be confiscated, including the Cauldron Lake Lodge. That's preposterous. You can't just seize my property. I'm a United States citizen. I have rights. That lodge is my life's work. I'm offering you years of research. Get him out of here. You're making a mistake. You have to listen to me. You have to listen. And one more trip into the Ocean View Motel. I forgot again. I had a plan. I know it. I forgot. Whatever is going on with Wake, he clearly needs some help. The imagery that they use for those transitions into Wake's perspective in the dark place and the sound effects are so disturbing to me. And then on top of that, his mental health fracturing and deteriorating in there is extra torturous. Like, it's legit the most unsettling part of this DLC and they execute on that really well. I feel more sympathy for Alan Wake than I did in his own game. And more afraid for him and in general. And I think my own, like, health anxieties are rolled up into that, too. Which just makes this hit all the, all that much harder. The story needed many beginnings, many springs. Streams that turned into a river, a flood, and then an ocean. This was one. Wake used the materials he had, the connections he had, the people, the places. Wake put them in to make it true. His wife the psychiatrist, his city. These connections, like magnets, move things. Alice was a conduit. She'd been in the dark place. The thing that had been Hartman sensed her near, sensed Wake through her, went berserk, broke loose. Wake made sure Alice was already gone by then, safe. The more springs, the more the story became real, the more people believed, cause and effect. It was extremely delicate and hard work. It had to go through the path of least resistance where success was most likely. Where there was a connection already. Wake felt the pressure grow in his head. Going mad. Wake had to escape. Right. His. Escape. He was already out. He wanted to make it true. Wake needed a hero. A hero needed a crisis. For the part in the story about the government agency, Wake needed something special, something to convey an alien force mimicking human intelligence. Something that can't be translated. Translated. Wake channeled Burroughs and Bowie. He cut up sentences and words. Orange peel. You are home. Insane. He put them in a shoebox. He pulled out the words. Wake created a Dada's poem. I'd try anything once. Or had he tried this before? His escape. Wake needed a hero. A hero needed a crisis. For the part in 
interesting story about the government agency when you needed something special, something to convey an alien force mimicking human intelligence. So it's looking like Alan Wake wrote the entirety of Control, the FBC, maybe even Jesse, and especially the Hiss, into existence to free himself, iterating from the dark place on story after story. Another replica. Like the one they made for Ordinary. I wonder what happened here. Also, I really like the way they brought the ocean line back. Uh, Alan Wake. Send back up to my location. Alan Wake ended on the line, uh, it's not a lake, it's an ocean, which could ambiguously have been referring to Cauldron Lake, uh, which he dove into, or the darkness or the dark place contained in it. And then we get even more about Alice Wake and her time in the dark place and emerging from it, only to be haunted by something nightmarish, something which may have been Mr. Scratch. Uh, but for this final bit with Hartman, we don't have too complicated a puzzle, not like the last few times. Instead, we're just going from spot to spot, plugging the batteries in as we go along, as we get them. And then eventually we'll be able to flood the whole place with light and have our final encounter, because he has nowhere else to escape to now. I think that's it for the batteries. We have to make our way over to, I think, the one on the far side to turn the lights on. And now this becomes a boss fight in Bright Falls. And the most Hartman can really do to you is teleport next to you and try to grab you. I think he just tried to do that to the ranger. Uh, or he can, he can vomit a bunch of projectiles at you. Right now, not too dangerous. I think only one of those landed. And once you get him down to nothing, phase two begins. Pounds the ground, knocks the batteries out, Im uh, 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 suffuses you with darkness. And you have to plug them all back in before the lights go back on automatically. And spawns some enemies in and gives himself a shield. Oh yeah, that's right. Not only uh, does the darkness drain your energy bar slowly, you can't refill it at all until you get into the light. They are probably going to kill off my ranger. Now, if you are really quick... You can uh, get a good one cycle off on him. Or maybe a really late two cycle. Uh, I'm not feeling the charge so much, so I'm switching to spin. I think I can dump more damage into him this way. Ooh, I took the, uh, the AoE too. Yeah, I think I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna have to deal with the adds. Oh, I got two in one there. Oh, nice. Oh, that's not two cycle at all. And that means more ad spawn. Oh, where is there some light? Feels like he knocks more of the batteries out each time. This is actually pretty dangerous, and I don't have energy to shield either. Was pretty close. That's one ad dealt with at least. 
now we just need to get the lights back on and try to make this a two cycle. Okay, good. Ah. He's being super mobile. That was scary for a second. <laughs> uh, that's not bad damage. The only problem is, if I get that close, it's really hard to then dodge uh, that AoE ground pound thing he does. Ooh, that's not even going to be a three cycle, which makes this way harder than it needs to be. Oh, I don't know if I love this. Uh, eh? This is no bueno. Ah, oh, God, that was really close. All right, I'm not going to make you all watch phase one again. Starting with spin right off the bat this time. And I have a better plan. Namely, I'm going to deal with the ads more quickly so I can spend more time dumping damage into them in the light phase. Never mind. No, I'm not. They spawned way far away and I didn't even realize where they were spawning in. That's still pretty quick. The first ads are no big deal. For such a big dude, he is such a tiny head. I don't know why it switched back to shotgun mode. No. You might also just be able to to do enough damage to interrupt uh, him knocking the the power cells out. Because this is a much quicker fight this time around. And I can't attribute all of that to spin. Damn, if I had figured out where he teleported to more quickly, that could have been a two cycle, uh, a one cycle. Okay, this time. And we have enough energy to do this. Eh, taking a few projectiles, that's not too bad. I could have seized him, but I wanted to just spend more time damaging Hartman. Oh yeah, I forgot he heals a little bit too. Uh, I think he can grab the rangers or uh, the, the allies he spawns and just drain them. Uh, if he grabs you with the charge, you can actually uh, shoot him until he lets go of you. Hartman won't be a problem anymore, Langston. But Investigations needs someone to run it. Interested? I've seen what happens to Sector Heads, ma'am. No, thank you. Ma'am, I'm getting something on my terminal here, an AWE alert from Bright Falls, Washington. But it might be a glitch. The date's all wrong a couple of years in the future. And we're in lockdown. There shouldn't be any incoming signals. Maybe it was active before we went into lockdown? Are there agents on site? Let me check. Agent Estevez is the field agent in charge of monitoring the site, so she should be there to let us know if the situation has been through any major changes recently.
and that is the ending of the DLC. Then they just kick you back into the Bright Falls AWE area so you can appreciate this impressive diorama, including all the destructible debris. Namely, the lodge. It's a really fitting place to end this on. And we even finish up with an ending that clearly teases Alan Wake 2. And we've gotten some teases for another control along the journey as well. Uh, there are still a couple of things to find around here too, like a couple of extra supplemental notes about Bright Falls. Bright Falls in the 70s at that. Threshold Manifestation in Cauldron Lake. So we knew already that the darkness uh, from Alan Wake went back quite a bit because uh, Thomas Zane had battled it before Wake did. And we also get a couple of more lines of dialogue and an extra recording before we're finally through. Uh, once we get all that, we'll hit the credits. This must be where they studied Hartman. Kind of looks like Dylan's cell. I wonder if they treated him as badly. What? I did not know there was a fight here. Looks like a hefty one, too. So we have the two levitating rangers, we have the cluster, and then the big boy. Shit. Uh, I want to get this thing under control as soon as possible. Plus, I'm going to need the healing. Should be in range. I'm just not in physical range. Like, it's in the, it's below the health threshold for C's. Oh, uh, okay. We're good. I no longer feel too in danger. This could still go wrong, though. These are pretty high-level enemies. And I'm not hitting anything. <laughs> God. You can see how hard they hit. And that, uh, our cluster that we seized is not going to last forever. Shit. I'm running into energy issues, too. Just because I have to be so evasive and use so much up. And we got more spawning in. Ooh, uh-oh. The grenade's way too slow to catch them unless they've already used their evade. Uh, the enemy evasion is on, like, what feels like a three or four second internal cooldown. This is turning out to be a really chaotic fight. I love that health threshold for grabbing enemies. Like, if they hit about a one-fifth life, they're just automatically dead as soon as you grab them. We're still getting more spawning in. What is going on with this endgame super fight? <laughs> Ah, the fence was blocking so many of those hits that should have gone over it. Okay, I need, I need you. You are my friend now. Come back at full health and serve me. My aim sensitivity is way too low. <laughs> I think that's it. Now the music. Where? Over on the left? Huh? Oh, I didn't even realize you were here. Another one. Oh no, it's uh, the, the cloaking enemy. We can tank that. We're fine, we're fine. Just have to kill it. Oh, wow. All that to get to this tape recorder. <laughs> for our final message from Hartman. These are the notes of Dr. Emil Hartman. I am continuing my work alone again since certain parties were too blind to recognize a golden opportunity. Despite my generous offers, the conversations came to naught. Some people simply do not value collaboration as I do. Though I believe now that it was for the best the sort of bold pioneering work that I am undertaking cannot thrive under the shackles of bureaucracy and regulation. I have a history of seeking such partnerships, 
There was a time when I had hoped Alan Wake and I could collaborate. Together we could have produced art such that the world has never seen. But Wake was stubborn, egotistical. Writers usually are. Disappointing nonetheless. But now, like Tom before him, Wake has disappeared into Cauldron Lake. And this is where my work turns. Hypothetical. Since he was lost to the lake, Thomas Zane has been observed by various townspeople. This indicates to me that the individuals within the lake are not entirely gone. I anticipate Wake will similarly return one day. While I may harbor some resentment for the man, his raw talent and determination are undeniable. From this, I have concluded that the lake and the dark place within it are not as removed from this world as I previously thought. Given my acute awareness of what awaits within, my meticulous preparations, and my considerable education, I believe myself much more prepared than either Tom or Wake. I should be able to cross into that dark realm with the chance to return as they have. All that remains is the dive itself. It frightens me, I admit, but such is the burden of the truth seeker. I will take my plunge into the dark tomorrow with only the light of knowledge to guide me. It is time for a breakthrough. Until I return. All right, and with that, there's only one thing that we haven't done that I still intend to show. Uh, we skipped the credits way back until we completed the game's final DLC. And with all of that, Control, The Foundation, and AWE are now complete. Control has been a joy. Uh, both DLCs did their own thing while expanding meaningfully on both the main game and even Remedy's extended universe now. Uh, so it's bittersweet to finally be done with it. But it's been a blast watching Jesse develop, uh, learning about the FBC, and getting to luxuriate in this unsettling weird fiction with all of its SCP and Jeff Vandermeer and House of Leaves influences. Also, this seems like a really good time to say this, but I want to apologize to Remedy and to uh, Sam Lake. I think when I Let's Played Alan Wake uh, seven years ago now, Holy shit, it's been a while. Um, and American Nightmare, which was five years ago. I was really, really harsh, especially on American Nightmare. Uh, I still don't like the game, but I wasn't just being critical of them. I was being really mean-spirited in some of my critiques. And in some cases, I wasn't even really fully engaging in good faith criticism. Especially, again, with American Nightmare. I was just bitter because of I, I had my expectations really high and it ended up being just this kind of eh kind of mediocre time loop thing but i was just being mocking for the sake of like some easy jokes and just again really mean i think i, I made some dumb jokes buying into like the it's not a lake it's an ocean thing as a form of self-reference uh self-referential self-aggrandizement which is just stupid like it's not it's not a good criticism of Alan Wake's writing, and there still are things that you can criticize about it. And again, being particularly critical is not the problem here. I believe strongly in criticism and in articulating why I feel the way I feel about games as a whole, and it, th their individual constituent parts, uh, whether I love them or hate them or feel ambivalent towards them. Criticism is really important to me, but if you make mean-spirited, disingenuous critiques or just try to dress up attacks and ad hominems or mean jokes as criticism, you do your audience a disservice and you rob your own points of merit and you make it really hard for anyone watching to separate the valid, useful stuff from the chaff. So I don't know if anyone from Remedy has ever seen any of my LPs, uh, but on the off chance they have, if I 
really feel strongly that something in Control or Alan Wake or whatever is bad, I want to express myself in a clear and fair way so that there's a better chance that they won't be put off from seriously examining the merits of that critique and doing better in future games. Uh, I think Sam Lake and the rest of the narrative team at Remedy, and I mean the entire staff there to be fair, have grown tremendously over the years. Um, and I think Control is an incredible, impressive showing of that growth, so good job. <laughs> oh man, it, it's just such a good game. I have had an amazing time with it. And it's made me appreciate Alan Wake more in retrospect and American Nightmare, which again, I still don't like, but I've, I've definitely softened on it, especially after playing this and seeing how everything shakes out uh, and doing more digging on it. So if you follow me on Patreon, you know the next game after uh, this and either Neo or Galerian's finishes involves something really near and dear to my heart, something which I talk about extremely rarely on the channel, despite what a big part of my life it is. Skateboarding. And speaking of Patreon, uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can do that over at patreon.com slash scribe. There's also a link in the description and links to all of my social media, my Twitch, twitch.tv slash scribed. Make sure to tune in on October 24th through the 30th, especially if you like spooky games like Control, because I am going to play uh, over 30 of them over the course of seven days. Four hours a night. Mm, Halloween number six. Coming up October 24th through the 30th on twitch.tv slash scribed. And also speaking of Patreon, uh, we have some shout outs for the month. So thank you to my glucose guardians at the $10 tier. <laughs> Victor T, Absinthe Miasma, Evan, Maxine the Gay Machine, Cracky, Chris Mixner Croft, Kyle Smith, and Nevin Zerasmus. Thank you all so much for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.